Hey everyone, my name is Drew, and we're here, and this is going to be week number two of Pack the Pokemon All-Star Competition, and we are here up against Regget Mike, and I believe we've only battled once before, but uh, the first battle I don't think went <laughs> terribly well for me. But we're back here, like I said, uh, I'm feeling really confident with this team, and I really want to kind of mess with it a ton more. So a lot of here is going to be experimentation and kind of like working with this team, but there's a lot of fun stuff here. Avalug, the MVP of last game, is back, and you can already see a White Herb Cloister. I kind of want to run it back with a lead Cloister, just trying to pull things off here, because truthfully, he has a very, very scary rain team you guys can kind of see the outlines of a really strong rain team it doesn't actually bring the float soul which is fantastic for kind of what i want to do here but honestly the combination of snaps after a shell smash plus cloister being able to use terra blast electric felt really really strong to me and depending on the right matchup it felt like it could honestly six so on its own so i'm gonna try that out here i really wanted to mess around with the jet pack iron hands just because i see how, how often mounte uses it and how often aquarius uses it and i really kind of wanted to see how well it can work for me here and everything else here is pretty straightforward i think lucario can put so so many dents in this team i really want lucario to come out here and do a lot of things because it has so much potential in this overall matchup but with that i think honestly my team is pretty self-explanatory i kind of just want to get right into it so like i mentioned i'm going to lead off with a cloister here and really what i'm looking out for more than anything is anything that i can kind of use to set up on because if he goes for kind of a hazard lead i think that puts me in a fantastic position i do see the dragology and w immediately when i see a lead dragology my first thought is oh he's just going to set up toxic spikes and kind of be happy with that and kind of progress into the uh contours of the game and this is a fantastic opportunity for me if i can get a free shell smash off here i would feel incredible about this turn also uh we dc'd ones uh this is actually our, our second attempt here because immediately we just sent out our leads and we dc'd so uh we're already kind of uh thinking through a bunch of things a lot of things were going in through my head in this moment but the plan was the plan is simple as they say just to click shell smash and try to death the team as much as possible but goes immediately for a sludge bomb and it's a it's an it's a one hit KO. what can i say the plan did not work out it it i mean it's okay i cloister uh as much as it could have done literally everything, I think, if, I, if it had given bit, given the chance, uh, I don't think it's detri It's like game-breaking for me, but I am going to have to figure a lot of things out. However, I do go right into Lucario, which, even looking back on this, surprised me a little bit. It's, 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 it's a little bit bold of me, but uh, I feel like we can make it work. And you can see, I, I try to take this opportunity and go straight for a sword stance. Again, a little bit bold of me, but I do resist both stabs, resist or am immune. So I guess I feel like I can make this kind of play here, but let's go past me, right? I'll, I'll find some way to figure this one out. So it does go out into the Pelipper, which is kind of exactly what I wanted. Probably expected an EQ, and um, whatever gets me a free Sword Dance is exactly what I want, because now I can click Thunder Punch, and Thunder Punch here gets me exactly where I need to be. I know it KOs like a max defense, like like whatever the heck this this thing can have, except maybe a Wakan Berry, I can kind of deal with it here. But getting this Pelipper out of the way and getting Rain out of the way this early on is going to be huge. It's going to limit the Palafin, or at least it's not going to make the Palafin oppressive, right? It's going to be a couple notches below oppressive here, right? I'm feeling okay about this interaction, and I really had two goals for this Lucario right my first goal was to uh pressure the pelipper and maybe try to catch the pelipper off guard on a turn where it's not expecting a thunder punch and i can hit it with a thunder punch he might not think that i have room on my move set if i reveal sword dance potentially have earthquake and i believe we are about to dc in just a second here okay we're back and just to finish that thought my second huge ideal situation like like pie in the sky like absolutely would be ecstatic if this happens if this works out with lucario is one to kind of bait the pelipper and uh, be able to, to, to KO it to prevent rain. And I calc this out pretty specifically, I think. But if I have an SD up, and I think I needed muscle band for this, which is why I think I brought the muscle band, just to kind of make things more, more comfortable. If I can bait out the Jolteon as well, then I can extreme speed it and pick up a KO. And again, there's a lot of things in his mind, right? This is a Lucario with no stab at all, right? So it's a pretty unusual Lu Lucario. Obviously, it's very specific to this matchup. But if he doesn't think that I have room for an extreme speed, then I can catch it off guard. And it everything happened exactly the way I wanted it to. I got to KO the Pelipper. I got to KO the Jolteon, which were two huge kind of impediments to kind of what, what i want to do here but honestly i'm thinking everything else here is just bonus right um i kind of made up for the cloister misplay but uh lucario being able to pick up two in return was so so huge and so so meaningful here and it kind of puts me back in this thing in a huge huge way and again uh me having this kind of silly 
no stab Lucario did seem unusual. I know that that's one of the big things that he told me after the match was that uh, he did not expect this Lucario at all. But it just made sense, right? And his team is so weak to to, to the combination of like Thunder Punch um, and an Earthquake that it just made sense to me. And um, <laughs> honestly, it did feel a little bit silly having a Lucario that, that doesn't actually hit Ting Lu for super effective damage, but my thinking there was that he was never going to be in a position where he could just leave Ting Lu in front of a Lucario and kind of feel comfortable there, and whatever he switches out into is going to get me that kind of super surprise Lucario value that I really need out of it, it's especially in this week when I feel like I have enough tools to kind of deal with the Ting Lu. Um, obviously, Ting Lu can be a monster. It's been used in so many different ways at this point, but uh, it's not my main concern in this in this game plan when I have to deal with so many kind of rain options here. And um, this this staying Corviknight, right? I can't just bring like a pretty standard Lucario that just loses Corviknight, which we do lose Corviknight re re regardless. I'm free to admit that. However, I a I could have Thunder Punched, and b um, it makes him burn his Terra, and I get a whole bunch of damage off. Um, this Terra Dragon really threw me off, and I should have known that he, that he would have something kind of up his sleeve when he went into this thing after I revealed like Swords Dance, Muscle Band, Th Thunder Punch. But uh, I didn't really know how to play it, right? I, 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 I couldn't just click Extreme Speed. It could have been like Terra Steel for all I knew, right? So I really didn't quite know what to do. And honestly, even in this position, I really don't know what to do that doesn't give up a ton of damage onto my team with this Squirrel Knight. So I kind of bit the bullet here. This is really not what I wanted to be doing with my Iron Hands. But I bring in Iron Hands, and I believe I just clicked Close Combat. I should be fat. Well, I should have been naturally faster than this because I did bring a slightly faster I Iron Hands um, to kind of outspeed this Squirrel Knight if it is just max defense, which is really the, the scariest set he could have bring against my team in particular because my team is so uh, physically offensive de dependent, but uh, especially after the para, it was never going to be a question, but we are able to, to get a close combat off, which is going to trigger my eject pack, which is, again, is not how I really wanted this eject pack to, to be used, but I had to burn it in this moment. It didn't feel great. I really wanted to, to, to go for another move, but uh, I really didn't have a great other move for the situation. I believe Earthquake was a was a roll, and it wasn't particularly in my favor. So uh, it did it, it never felt great in this moment, right? So I had to, I, I had to burn it, which I can't say again, uh, 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 say enough. It just never felt great in this moment. Brings out this thing, and I know I can't just straight up KO this thing. I am banded, and and this thing does seem to be pretty offensive. So maybe I was looking at at the calcs wrong maybe i i did have a bit more damage output here than i gave myself credit for in the beginning but uh i really didn't want to give up masquerade in particular especially because it does um insulate me from the palafin if nothing else and uh and the ting lu which he's he, he's only down to his last three mons i'm i'm down to four so I'm, I'm in a position here where i need to play this a little bit more more conservatively Especially again tr trying to claw back after that turn one, but uh, I should be able to, to just click user in here Especially knowing that his preferred move to to want to hit me is going to probably be sludge bomb Maybe maybe Draco. It's a possibility, but not a huge one. I don't think um, but it does allow me to go out into the Miss Magius Which is going to be able to uh, resist the, the, the sludge bomb and be able to hit this thing back now, uh, this is a somewhat awkward moment here where I really didn't know what, what, what I wanted to do because I didn't want to spec, specs myself into a Shadow Ball. I think Shadow Ball um, slightly comfortably pick, picked up the KO, but if he had a little bit of special defense investment, then it would have been tough. It, it was tough to say in this moment, right? But I, I really didn't want to lock myself into it because of the Ting Lu in the back. There was nothing else that I could lock into that I felt really comfortable with in this moment. So what I ended up doing was I went into Iron Hands. Um, and look, Iron, Iron Hands is dumb fat and it can take a bunch of hits here and um, we can kind of manage what, whatever I want to take and be able to, to, to hit it back. However, he switches out. Uh, which really kind of threw me off in this moment, but it switches out into the Palafin. Now, 0% of me thought that this Palafin was just going to like stay in and try to hit what's in front of me. So I just went for the most damage possible, and I figured, look, he's either going to go into the Ting Lu, which takes a bunch of damage, or he's going to try to sack off the, um, the 
Dragology, which which is going to uh, probably get KO'd by close combat, if not to, because again, this is a reasonably fast, this is a reasonably fast Iron Hands, right? But uh, what he got out of all this switching around was a free switch into the Palafin, which honestly surprised me also in the, in the moment because because I really could have just spec Shadow Balled and hit that Palafin really really hard. But I'm able to, to click close combat. I'm able to. Uh, pick up a KO so another one for, for hands and I'm feeling really good about this right because now all that's left is is a Ting Lu which really all I need is is some damage on and a Palafin which I feel okay about dealing with right especially outside of rain with, without having you know to deal with the rain so we're gonna see what it, whatever wants to come out I, but I think whatever comes out I just try to hit it hard w w with hands and kind of uh, take it from there, right? Okay, and here he brings out the Ting Lu, and this this is fine for me, right? Uh, I'm just able to to just hit this thing as hard as I can and uh, take the damage, bank it for, from Yasukarada, and hopefully put myself in a better position. And honestly, this is exactly the type of situation that I wanted the eject pack for. This is the ideal situation. Ob obviously, you guys saw kind of the flow of the battle. And that I was never going to be able to pull it off quite the way that I wanted to. But what I really wanted more than anything was to be able to to close combat into a Ting Lu. He thinks he can t he, he thinks he can KO me w with Earthquake. I eject pack out into Miss Magius and, and I'm able to do something. But it's not how, how it ended up working out. I can go out into uh, Masquerada and with how strong and fast Masquerada is here. Um... I can just walk in a flower trick and feel good about how this ends. I don't know if I'm running a calcs or not, but oh yeah, also, I did um, run some calcs before this game, which which really was why I wanted to, to, to bring band, but um, but I think I this KOs, this banded flower trick KOs even like max HP, uh, max HP Palafin, and really the best that he can hit me with was uh was jet punch and i think if i remember right i, I think this is an adamant choice banded uh masquerade so it's just outputting a bunch of damage and uh the best he can really do is is jet punch oh i i yeah i even think i i i accounted for this as well i think i uh did put a bit of defense investment just to be able to take these jet punches a little bit better make sure that i don't get ko to two without a crit or, or whatever the case may be but that's it. Miascarada is able to close it out. It was a whole bunch of teamwork, right? Lucario was able to pick up the first two, make up for that Cloister early game, and then Iron Hands was able to pick up two in the mid game, just kind of switching around, positioning Iron Hands as best as I could, and kind of putting myself in a position there. And then Miascarada is just able to, to be fast and clean up the last two. So that's kind of how it was drawn up a little bit. I obviously wanted Cloister to put some dents into the team as well. But uh, if, if it had happened this way, then that's how it had happened, right? But that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the PC, as well as other things for the very near future. But once again, we'll be back. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be once again. Out.